So Big Bass, uh, standing for Big Ass Spaceship, uh, was Creek's large grid ship. Uh, when he first started this, uh, he had cells that would extend out from the body of the main ship. Uh, as he developed that ship, he realized one of the problems is that thrusters can't be controlled directly uh, on a subgrid as you can with the main body of the ship. That is, anything that's across a moving part, like a piston or a hinge or a rotor, it will have to be activated directly. Uh, so you could use it for maneuverability. It can be done, but it was either just beyond our knowledge at the time or just entirely too frustrating. So what he ended up doing is fixing the thrusters to the body of the ship so they wouldn't extend. So to be clear, I think the purpose of that was just mostly a vanity thing. It was just cool looking, having the thrusters extend to the edges, but I don't think anything was actually solved with that. But all the same, in the interest of simplicity and uh, the time that we had available to us, the cells were just fixed in place. So fast forward to somewhat recently, uh, I was messing around with WIP's subgrid thruster manager, which is available on the workshop. I was trying to work with thrusters that would uh, move or rotate left and right on my ship, the Vulture, and it was very successful. Well, I was thinking about this and realizing that I could probably apply this to the old Big Bass ship from the Space Mingler series. Uh, so I gave it a shot. And indeed, it does work. Not only can you extend the thrusters from the body of the ship, as intended, but one of the problems with Big Bass, as it was, was that you had it had to fly it vertically. It was really kind of bonkers. But that wasn't a design flaw or anything. The point of Big Bass was to be more of a rocket ship kind of design. And it, uh, as Creek referenced, it was meant to be in space most of the time. The only reason he brought it back down to the Mars planet at the very end was because we were short on time. It was going to be the last episode. It was like, well, why not give it a shot? But indeed, it's ridiculous to fly like that. Uh, so I was thinking that while I'm at it, since I just applied a rotation structure to the Vulture, why not apply it to Big Bass as well? Now, in order to do this, though, you're going to have to split the cells into two parts, because if you rotate both of them as is, it's going to be this giant long structure, and it's going to be ridiculously unwieldy to fly like that. So I elected to break it up into two pistons and two rotors. And with a little bit of finagling, I did manage to get it working. So this is Big Bass Mark II. So the way it works is first, because they rotate in the same direction, one side is free, whereas the other will clang if you leave it as is. Uh, so I have a, a two hinge lock structure to mostly just cover the edges. So you unlock that, and then I extend the nacelles to either side, uh, which by the way is not actually needed for any part of this, because uh, at no point do the nacelles actually touch the main body of the ship. It's actually interesting, so it's mostly just for fun to extend it at all. But in any case, then you can start the rotation by turning the rotors on, and then setting reverse on those rotors. This, by the way, is a logic that I got from Splitzy. It was referencing the proper way to handle movement set, which is you had the, the braking and the torque all the way up, and you keep the block on and off. That prevents it from being odd in movement. So that's what's going on here. And then after you have them rotated, you just retract them back into the body. And so I've covered up some of the vacant holes that that creates on the sides of the two halves of the nacelles. And there you go. And as you can see, it flies just fine. You can fly it horizontally. So the cost difference is uh, for designing it like this, because I had to put a lot more space in each side, of course. There is 20% less hydrogen storage because I had to forgo one or one of the hydrogen large hydrogen storage tanks in both in the cells, and there are a few less small grid thrusters as well. Uh, not a huge deal, but that is the difference. Additions were that because Creek was short on time, 
There were some blocks that were not finished on Big Bass, so I finished those for him. I added some ion thrusters, mostly for supplementary thrusting capabilities. Uh, that yet they're not really going to get too much out of these ion thrusters, but it does keep it stable in space. And door sensors, just because I couldn't be bothered to be constantly <laughs> closing doors behind me. Uh, beyond that, I didn't change much else. I wanted to keep things to the original essence of Big Bass. All I was really trying to do was to apply this cell thing. So that's why there's really no horizontal landing solution, nor is there any ramp getting out of the uh, ship like I have been applying to a lot of my ships recently. So this is pretty much all I was going to go with with uh, Big Bass. So for work, workshop inclusion, I do not have permission from Creek from this, even though I made the Mark II uh, changes here. I do not own the original ship structure, so if I get permission from Creek, I will modify the description of this video, and y'all can get it from the workshop that way. So just check that at a later time. Otherwise, I am going to upload the Vulture attack ship. Uh, so if you want to just have the general idea of how this works, it's applied on the Vulture as well, so you can get the idea there. All right, thank you all for watching.